what separates someone who will be successful on Etsy versus someone who won't be successful. I'm gonna give you these 10 things that I picked up on and how to combat them in case you fall into these categories. If you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel because I put new videos out about business and Etsy every week. Now, if you're new here, my name is Dylan Jarris and I'm an Etsy shop owner of about seven years. I've sold over $1.5 million in revenue on the platform, over a million dollars in profit because really that's what matters, right? And my background is corporate e-commerce. I worked for big companies like Zappos and Zulily and now I teach hundreds of Etsy sellers just like you how to scale their businesses to multi six figures. So if you're interested in that, contact us with the link in the description. What separates someone who will be successful on Etsy versus someone who won't? I've talked to over a thousand Etsy sellers and prospective Etsy sellers and I can tell pretty quickly which ones have what it takes to be successful. Today I'm going to talk about 10 things that really stood out to me about the type of person who's not going to be successful on Etsy. If you find yourself falling into these 10 things and you're not willing to change or adjust, I might not even continue a shop. If however, you can be self-aware enough to recognize these things in yourself and apply some key things to really reframe how you operate, you can be extremely successful. I have also seen people who have all of these 10 things and then they really work hard on making key adjustments and reframing their mind and then all of a sudden they become extremely successful. You can tackle these things and get out of your own way so that you actually have a shot of seeing huge success on Etsy. Number one, consistency. And I don't just mean putting up five listings every day. I'm talking about with a much longer time horizon. So yes, you need to be consistent on a daily basis, but also on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis. If you go into this with a short time horizon of, okay, I need to see results in the next two months or I'm out, you probably shouldn't even try. So you really need to look at this with the long game in mind. And you have to tell yourself, I'm willing to be consistent at this for like at least a year. And this is if you really wanna make a lot of money. So if you're not trying to make a lot of money, forget everything I'm about to say. You probably don't even watch the video, honestly. So this means making consistent sacrifices to outwork the competition, to do you know one more rep when everyone else is going to bed. This means consistency to keep pushing, keep learning, keep improving, and keep acquiring all these new skill sets, SEO, better photos, listing optimization for mobile and desktop, how to drive traffic organically, how to appropriately run ads if ever. You have to consistently push yourself to learn how to target profitable customers, how to build a well-rounded product mix. The second reason I see people on Etsy fail is because they give themselves every excuse in the world to not be successful. Instead of focusing on what's going to work for them, they're focused instead on what's not going to work for them. They're the ones who say, it's too saturated. There's not enough room for me. I'm not good enough. They say, this is not a good time. I only have an hour per day. I'm going on vacation next month. I have small kids. Oftentimes I find it's a time excuse and also a skill excuse. I'm not good at this. What if people don't like my stuff? And usually it comes down to being a fear of failure, I think. Instead of trying and failing, it's almost like they'd rather not try at all. Instead of having that mentality, I would look at your life and say, if I am in the exact same position that I'm in right now, five years from now, am I okay with that? Am I happy with that? Do you need to change something? Do you need to push yourself outside of your comfort zone? Do you need to kind of suppress that fear of failure and just to jump all in, give it a shot? Because where will you have more regrets? If you tried a business and it failed, or would you have more regrets if five years from now, you are still in your dead end job? Maybe you're making five to 10% more, but you hate your boss. It's the same day-to-day -day monotony. Look back and you realize, if I had started that business five years ago, I wonder if I would still have to be in this job that I hate. Or I wonder if I had done that, could I be self-employed right now? That's where the regret is. The regret's usually not in the things that you try. Regret usually comes from things that you don't try. The third thing that will make you a lot less successful on Etsy is if you overanalyze everything. And overanalyzing just doesn't slow you down, but it's also gonna kill your conversion. And I'm gonna share with you why that is. You're gonna spend so much time getting a listing up. You're spending so much time planning instead of taking action. All these things are in your mind, but they're not out there for people to purchase. Ultimately, you end up growing a lot slower if you overanalyze everything before you put it out there to purchase. The reason overanalyzing things hurts your conversion is because you overcomplicate things, usually within your listings. When you overanalyze a listing or a product, it oftentimes tends to overcomplicate it for the customer. And when you overcomplicate a listing or a product, 
no one's gonna buy it. It's gonna kill your conversion. So overanalyzing things tends to overcomplicate things and that kills your conversion. One variation, max two variations, right? Two options in each one, maybe three. I recommend not going out guns blazing with the most complicated options, every single color option, every single font option, every single potential combination that you can imagine. Start simple, get proof of concept with a simple listing that is easy for people to purchase to see if they even like the concept of the product, of the idea. And then you can always add complexity and options to a listing. But if you start with way too much complexity, way too many options, then you're not ever gonna even see traction. There's way too much friction for people to be able to purchase. We wanna make your listings an easy purchase decision for people. So they come to the listing, they buy it the first time they see it. The fourth thing that's gonna slow you down is being a perfectionist. This means that every little detail has to be up to your standards before you put a listing up or before you test a product. The thing is, your standards are oftentimes completely different than a customer's standards. I find that a lot of students that I work with come into the program with maybe an existing product mix, right? Sometimes they have been very kind of perfectionistic about all the different components of that product. They've been in the business so long, right? They're really in the business to where they don't even see opportunities for them to maybe lower their overhead by eliminating features that don't even matter to the customer, right? Certain features matter to the founder, the designer, the creator more than they matter to the customer. I had an example of this where my husband, we used to make these wood cutout items and he would router the back of it. Well, we realized customers didn't even realize they were paying for that feature because they didn't see that in the listing photos. So we are giving them a feature that they didn't even really care about. They didn't think they were paying for, but we're adding, you know, 20% more time to creating that product to give them something that they don't even want. So that is just an example of one way that perfectionism can really eat into your margin. It can eat into your speed and efficiency, and it can really slow you down. So instead of being a perfectionist and holding your product only to your standards, frame it in the idea of the customer's standards. What is the customer expecting? The next mistake that I see that's really gonna limit your success is not getting enough customer data and doing everything the same for way too long. So this is when I come to a shop and they're using all the same mockups, right? 30 listings and the pictures all look pretty identical. They're not doing any split testing, any A-B testing on anything. It's a huge missed opportunity to see what would convert customers better. So if you are in the early stages of your business and you are doing everything the same way for a long period of time, you're gonna miss huge opportunities, leave a ton of money on the table. A lack of testing is really what I see slow people's success. The next thing that will really hurt your success on Etsy, and I'm gonna show you how to combat it, it is having bad designs. You might think, I'm not a designer. I have no graphic design experience. Most of my students have zero experience in any of this, but we all know that the way to get better is through a volume of experience and trial and error and constantly trying to make better and better designs, right? In order for your designs to start looking better, you have to start making a ton of them. The problem is when you start publishing your designs right out the gate and you might think, okay, I'm just trying to get five listings up a day. Who cares if they're bad? I know they're gonna be bad, they'll get better. Publishing your bad ones early, they're gonna be sitting around dead for much longer and it's actually gonna hurt the good ones that you publish later on. So I recommend getting that volume of experience with designing, but not publishing all those bad listings. You're honestly gonna be so much better if you put your best foot forward first, which means not putting up the very first thing that you ever made in Canva, because it's gonna slow you down and it's actually gonna hurt your decent listings when you finally start making decent ones. The next thing that I see really, really hurt people's success is when they finally get a sale, they start getting more views or favorites, and then they don't immediately take those lessons learned and apply them to the rest of their shop. This is when, you know, you have a brand new shop, you start to get some favorites, okay, you finally get a sale and you think, oh, this is great, okay, this is my best seller. Well, why is it your best seller? You need to dig in and identify why it's working and do more of that with your other listings. When people start to get some traction, whether it's views or favorites or a sale, you really need to start applying those lessons learned to the rest of your listings and your future listings. Don't just let the other listings sit stagnant. The eighth thing that I see as a huge detriment to success on Etsy is only selling things that you like. It's a huge problem if you are not a profitable customer yourself. You know, a lot of people who start on Etsy, they're doing it because they really want to make money. They need to make money. They're in a, in a maybe bad financial situation. If you feel like you are not the type of customer you want to sell to, then do not be making stuff that only you like. Who are those ideal profitable customers? Maybe the people who are in a great financial situation, the situation I aspire to be in someday. Who are those people? Target them. Do not sell to people like yourself. You're going to grow just so much faster if you're selling to more premium, 
premium, higher discretionary income type of customers. The ninth thing that I see really kills success on Etsy is the people who say, I want to make passive income and that is my goal. And they come in with that goal and they come in with that expectation, not willing to take a ton of action up front. And the thing is getting to passive income, everyone's talking about this on YouTube, right? Passive income, passive income, laptop lifestyle. In order to even get to that point, you have to put in months, usually years of hard, hard action that most people aren't willing to take. The idea of passive income and what it takes is oftentimes misleading. And I'm all about setting super clear expectations. We're very practical and level-headed here. And I will tell you to get truly passive income, it takes a ton of action on the front end because passive income never ever starts passively. The last thing that is really gonna kill your success on Etsy is when you come into building an Etsy business with a bazillion stipulations on what you're willing and not willing to do. And I see it usually when people tell me what they're willing to sell and what they're not willing to sell. So when I talk to someone, I wanna know what they want this to look like in their life from a practical standpoint. And a lot of times I'll hear, I'm not willing to store any inventory. I'm not willing to ship anything. I'm not willing to put up a thousand listings. I'm not willing to work on this in the evenings. I don't want it to take up too much time. I don't want to have to learn Photoshop. I only want to do AI things. I only want to do this if it's going to be fully automated and I don't have to touch it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I've heard that. I'm not willing to sell to a different type of customer, but I do want to make at least $10,000 per month. Okay. And then I ask, so what are you willing to do? <laughs> you really cannot have your cake and eat it too. Building a business to be at $10,000 a month or more on Etsy, it's not going to be the perfect cookie cutter picture. There's going to be different challenges, different sacrifices, but that's what it takes to build a high income consistent. If you're not willing to make any sacrifices, then entrepreneurship probably is not the right thing for you. Because if you're not willing to kind of adopt the traits to be a successful entrepreneur, it's probably not worth your time. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, if you want it badly enough, if you decide right now, I don't want my life to look five years from now, what it looks like today, then you've got to be willing to make the sacrifices to get there. These 10 things I've noticed are big, big signs that someone might not be successful on Etsy. So if you kind of look within and you think, oh no, I have like six out of 10 here. Just reframe, that's all it takes, a reframe. And step one is being self-aware. So mission accomplished there, but reframe where you're at. I've given you some ways to combat these things. And if you are looking for a mentor in this space, I am currently taking on new students in my coaching program. And if you wanna reach out, just use the link below in the description and we can chat more. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.